Hey guys, and welcome to Crunk and Matt making Trigger Circuitry Episode 2. In this episode, we're going to be going over how to make a relatively simple pulsing trigger clock for use in your Crunk and Maps. Anyways, let's see how it works. As you can see, as soon as we spawn into the game, this circuit is already running and pulsing in a clock circuit. And it's also running this little parkour thing, but we'll get to that later. Anyways, how does it work? The way it works is pretty much when the first player in the server spawns in, they land on this on enter trigger, which then triggers this purple thing, which destroys it, so that when another player spawns in and walks over it, it doesn't trigger it again. Anyway, this also triggers this blue guy over here, which pretty much kickstarts this pulsing circuit. So this is destroyed, and then on respawn, it destroys this green guy, and then when that respawns, it destroys the blue guy, and so forth, creating that infinite loop. But if we want to take an output from this, we actually have to make more triggers, because if we take an output from these, it would just stop the loop. So that's why we have these red guys. This red guy takes an output from green, and this one takes an output from blue. So when green respawns, it destroys this red guy here, which toggles this interface gate, which is for our parkour example. And when this blue guy respawns, it destroys this interface gate, which is an output, which goes to this other gate over here inside our parkour example. Anyway, let's see how we make this from start to finish. First things first, make sure we've got a save spawn platform, and then get a spawn. What you can do with the new editor is just click this little arrow in the bottom right corner, click that, and then you'll get quick add come up. From this, you can import a placeholder, a custom asset, a spawn point, or a cube. And in this circumstance, we want to take a spawn point. Once you've got that, drag it over to where you want your spawn to be. In this example, it's just going to be right here. And after this, you're going to want a trigger. So go to object in the top left corner, scroll down to tools, and then go across and scroll down until you get to trigger. And then click that. Bring this over to directly under your spawn. I like to leave a little one block gap in between just so that the game doesn't glitch out and not realize that the player has gone into it. What you're going to want to do is make the event on enter destroy interface. You want the health to be 5000 and the respawn to be 0. You want the ID to be 1 and the target to be 2. And you want it to be not visible. So in the top of the object config, just under where it says name, it says visible, and you want to uncheck that box. Next, you're going to want another trigger. What I usually do is just duplicate this one I've just made. Use Shift R to duplicate. After you've duplicated it, I would usually like to make it visible. So you can see it when you're working with it. Then change the color to something recognizable. Let's just make ours purple. Set the health to 5000 and the respawn timer to zero. You want the event to be on destroy, destroy interface. You want the ID to be two and the target to be one. What this first bit pretty much does is acts as a switch which will switch on the whole circuit and it's automatic. So the player spawns in, they land on this on enter trigger and then that will be able to kickstart the circuit, but because we don't want people going over it multiple times, it also triggers this purple guy here, which destroys it, so it can't be used again. Now you're going to want another trigger. Just duplicate this purple one you've already made. Change it to a different color. I like to change mine to blue for this one. Make its health 5000, and its respawn timer 1. You want the event to be on respawn, destroy interface. You want the ID to be 2, and the target to be 3. Next, you're going to want to duplicate this trigger across, and you're going to want to make sure the health is 5000, the respawn timer is 1, make the event on respawn, destroy interface, exactly the same as this. What you're changing is the interface ID and target. The ID, you want to make 3, and the target, 2. Now we should have our pulsing mechanism, and next thing we need is an output. First of all, Duplicate one of these two guys to get another trigger. Change the color to red to make it recognizable. Make sure the health is 5000 and the respawn timer is 1. Make the event on destroy and then the action whatever you want to output to. In this case, we're going to be making a little parkour thing, so we're going to make it toggle interface gate. Make the interface ID 2 and then the target, whatever you are outputting to. In this case, we'll make it 4. Now to make our other output. 
You can just only use one, but in this case we're going to have it outputting to two things, so we're going to want to use both of these. Duplicate this red one that we've just made. Make sure the health is 5000, the respawn timer is 1, and make the event on destroy, and then the action, what you're outputting to. In this case, we're going to make ours toggle interface gate. Make the ID 3, and the target, whatever you're outputting to. In this case, it's 5. Now to make the output. We have a functioning trigger circuit here, but now we actually need to make what it is outputting to. In this case, we're going to make a little parkour thing, so let's just get some gates. Go to the top left corner of the editor, go to Tools, Across, and then down to Gate. Take the gate across to wherever you want your parkour jump to be, because that's what we're making for this example. Let's just put ours here. Make the ID 4, and make it Closable, start hidden, with no pop-up. Duplicate this across to make your next gate, because we are now making our secondary output. Go over and find what you're outputting to. In this case, we're outputting from this red guy, and it's targeting 5. And so we're going to make the ID 5. This is the same as what we did from this one. This is 4, and this is outputting to 4. Let's make this jump a bit easier and then make a platform to land on after you've made the jumps. Now, let's give it a test. As you can see, as soon as I spawn in, the trigger clock starts running, and we've got our little parkour thing going. And, if I don't completely fail my jumps, you should be able to hop across like this, and there you go. It's a cool little circuit, and it's pretty fun. Now, you may not like the timings of the circuit, and that's okay. We can change it, and I'll show you how. To change the timings of the circuit, all we have to do is change the respawn times of all of these. So, go to all of them, and where it has respawn timer, let's just say we want to change it from 1 to 4. So we're going to make that 4, click enter, it'll save that, go to this one, make it 4. Go to the top right red one, make it 4. We're really just changing all of them to 4, so we'll do the same for this one, 4. And now if we host it, you'll see that it's a lot different in terms of timing. Now guys, of course, just a reminder, if you're ever testing triggers and gates, you have to actually host the game to test it because they only work if the game is hosted. Anyways, as you can see, this is running a lot slower than it was before, and it makes our parkour a lot easier to do. Anyways guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. The last Trigger Circuitry video got a lot of love, so if you could reciprocate it for this episode, I'd really appreciate it. There's a lot more fun stuff on the way. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.